Hello, and welcome to Verbling. I'm Teacher Oakley, and for the next hour, we're going to have a fascinating conversation about the toilet. Uh, okay, um, in this class, we'll do a little light reading about the history of the toilet. We're going to do a little brainstorming exercise where we will think of different uh, words, British and American, and slang for the toilet. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, descriptions of toilets we may have seen in our travels, and uh, whatever else. Uh, so a mixed bag of conversation reading and lots of conversation in this class with a topic which is probably a little unusual. <laughs> Maybe not usually talked about, but hey, if you're going to learn English, you might as well learn everything. So we're talking about the toilet. Uh, hello, Heidi. Welcome back. <coughs> Pardon me. Heidi? Hello. Hi. Again. Okay. Great. I can hear you. That's good. All right. Super. Uh, okay. Hey, Jesus. Hello. Hi, teacher. Nice to see Hi you again. Again. <laughs> Hi. again. Okay, welcome back. Uh, okay, and um, Dimas, hello? Yeah, hello. Hi, how are you today? Okay. Thank Great. You. Thanks for joining us uh, in this possibly uncomfortable topic. <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't bother me. Carolina, welcome to the class. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Hello, teacher. Thank you. Hello. Uh, and also, Carlos has joined us. Hello, Carlos. Welcome to the class. Hello, teacher. Hello. How are you? I'm doing okay, all things considered. Uh, okay, the first little exercise we're going to engage in is uh, we're going to do a little brainstorming exercise uh, in which we're going to think about different words for the toilet. Uh, okay, the toilet has various, lots of names, slang, uh, etc. Let's see what we can come up with. I'll be writing these. Uh, there's British names or words, English, I mean American, um, and there's, and, oh, yeah, anyway, there's lots of words for the toilet. Let's see what we can brainstorm. Heidi, can you think of another word for toilet? Heidi? I uh, guess it. Um, sometimes the screen stopped. My connection is very bad today. Yeah. Okay. Can you think of another word for toilet? Or while we're at it, the toilet, the bathroom. Sometimes, okay, the bathroom. Well, there's one. That Sometimes we say we have to go to the bathroom. We say I have to go to the toilet, although that's a little crude. WC. WC. Okay, WC. The chair. <laughs> chair, okay. WC, what is WC? It's uh, an yeah. acronym. Mm -hmm. I would have closed it. Well, there you correct. go. That is correct. Okay. The water closet. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can think of any slang. Water closet is a formal um, word. Of course, very British. Uh, Americans don't normally use water closet, but very common in Australia and uh, England, of course. Jesus, can you think of any others? Um. Names for bathroom or the actual... The object, the porcelain bowl itself, the, the toilet. Can you think of any, Jesus? No, teacher, I, I don't know what the wall. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, Sam. Welcome to the class. I'll come around to you in just a little bit. Hi, hi. Hi. Right. Demas, can you think of any? Help me brainstorm here. Any other words for? Mm, a restroom. Restroom, okay. Much more formally, uh, okay. You might ask for the restroom in a 
where's the restroom if you're in a restaurant or you're in a train station or something like that. Very commonly in the mall or a train station or whatever, they would be a sign that would say restrooms. Yes, very good. Uh, much more common and universal word to direct you to the bathroom. Definitely. Uh, Carolina, can you think of any others? Um, the loo. The loo, okay. <laughs> uh, yes, and interestingly, it's uh, always with the article, the definite article, the, the loo. I need to go to the loo. All right. Uh, this would be a more slang mm -hmm. type word for the toilet. Yeah. Uh, this one's used Brit British and Americans, actually, both. Um, we'll use this one. Uh, okay. Very good. Carlos, can you think of another word for the bathroom or the actual toilet? Well, sure. But I don't know if you use that word in the United States or maybe uh, British people, but here we have a word, and it's the throne. The throne. <laughs> yeah, for the toilet. It's a very yes. specific word. Well, yeah, okay. Where's your dad? He's on the throne. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't know if British use that or not, but Americans definitely use that one. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, certainly. I've heard that one many times in my life. Good one. Okay, obviously slang. Um, the throne, the actual dictionary meaning. Well, okay, Carlos, what is a throne in the real dictionary meaning? Not oh, where, uh, it's where the, the king is the, the seat of the king. The seat the of the king, king. or yeah. the queen. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Right. So, all right. Very good. Uh, okay. Sam, can you think of any other slang or any other options? Uh a lavatory? Lavatory, okay, very formal. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, mm -hmm. very formal, okay. very old, as we're going to see later. We're, we're going to read about the history of the toilet. Okay. Uh, can I ask that what he uh, said? Uh, Carlos, I think? Uh -huh. he, yes, uh, could you write, please, in a chat box that how we can see? I, I, so am, uh, I am writing all of these down Barbara. as we... Uh, uh, okay. I'm, yeah, okay, okay. Yes, Verbling yeah. chat. Please, no. uh, yes. please check out the Verbling chat box for if anybody doesn't know on the left hand side of your hangout, there's some icons on the pop out icons on the left side. The kind of gold V with a blue background is the Verbling chat box, and I'm using that kind of required to <laughs> because I work for Verbling and they pay me. <laughs> they make me do it. Okay, anyway, there, there you go. Lavatory, very, very formal, probably the most formal way to say bathroom, actually. Okay, good one. Uh, Francisco is also with us. Hi, Francisco. Hi, teacher. Welcome back. Okay. Thank you. All right, we've, we've got a long list going here of different words for bathroom or for the actual toilet itself. Can you think of any? Latrine. Oh, good one. Uh, excellent. Well, thank you also for writing it for me. Thank you. All right, latrine. All right, but this is, uh, okay, this is interesting. Francisco, where or what, what situation, where would you use the word latrine commonly? What do you well, think? Well, latrine is, yeah, it's, it's a restroom. Maybe it's good. <laughs> uh, okay, so where would you be where you would use a latrine? Uh, well, uh, in, the, in a ranch or outside of the city. Well, okay. Um, a latrine, generally, uh, first of all, in the military. It is the military jargon for the bathroom. Okay, so jarheads or marines or whatever. 
soldiers would definitely use latrine. And latrine is also used for a camp. Like when I was a kid and I went to summer camp, if I did something bad, I might be punished by uh, being told by the camp director, you will be, you need to clean all the latrines in camp. Most horrible punishment imaginable because camp latrines are disgusting. Uh, yeah. Okay. So in a camp situation or usually in a camp situation or, um, or in the, in the military actually refer to it that way. Uh, okay. Uh, good one. Uh, I can still think of a whole lot more. I bet we can do another round. Maybe, maybe not. If you can't think of one, that's okay. Heidi, can you think of any others? Lovey. Lavi? <laughs> Going to the lavi? All right. Is that short for a lavatory? Is that the idea? Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't know if I've heard that or not, but it makes sense. So, okay. All right. I would understand that if I heard it. Jesus, can you think of any others? Uh, well, maybe privy. Private? Yes, I, uh, I look it. <laughs> ah, pro, ah, okay. The privy. All right, just pronounce it. Privy, names. okay. I didn't understand. The privy. Okay, very good. The privy. And yes, I think it does come from private. You know, that's where it's derived from. The privy. Yeah, oh, good one. That's an old one. That's one my grandmother used. Aces. I haven't heard that one in a long time. Uh, all right. The privy. Yeah, okay. It's an older one. An old one, an oldie but a goodie. He says, all right, very good. Excellent. Demas, can you think of any others? My goodness, there's a lot of different oh, words. So my, my Yandex dictionary uh, shows John, maybe. John, very good. Yeah. Yes, and this is very common for Americans and usually again uh, with the uh, with the article the the John he's in the John I have to use the John where's the John uh, yeah the John like the proper name John a very common English name I don't really know why why John John gets picked on a lot actually I'm glad I don't have the name John my best friend's name is John but Okay, the John can refer to specifically the toilet or the bathroom. Uh, it can. It also has another derogatory meaning, slang meaning. Demas, do you know the other meaning for the John, for a John? Oh, a John. No, I don't know. No, another bad meaning. John really gets abused. A John is the customer of a prostitute. Uh, okay. So the customer is called a John. So another bad meaning. Also, we have John Doe. An unidentified dead body is called a John Doe. Nothing good about being named John. <laughs> Nothing good at all. You're a toilet. You're a dead guy. You're somebody who needs to solicit prostitutes. It's not, not, there's nothing good about it, really. Okay, anyway. I don't know why it has all these bad connotations. I really have no idea. Uh, all right, moving on. Carolina, let's get off the John. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Any others? I can't remember any. Can't remember any others? Okay, we're, get, we're getting down there. All right. Yeah, we're, we're, I can still think of a few, so I'm going to complete the round here. Carlos, can you think of any any others? Uh, let me try again in, in the same way before. So uh, this special place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> special place. Yeah, mm -hmm. it can be a special place. Or... Oh, a special place? He's yeah. going to the special place? <laughs> uh, well, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe if somebody's very sh shy about using one of these other 20 words. Possibly. 
Now, I, I really haven't heard that before. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, to be honest, but uh, okay. Uh, all right. Sam, can you think of any others? Yes. <laughs> can we say that um, ladies' room or men's room? Thank you. Yes, I've been waiting for that. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Uh, yes. Dressing, the, dressing or makeup. Uh, ladies' room and men's room is very, very common, mm -hmm. especially in America. Usually, every there's two rooms. You know, one will have a sort of a silhouette of a male, and one will have a silhouette of a female. Also, in America, it's very common to. I mean, uh, if you're in a Spanish restaurant, you see señores and señoras. If you're, uh, I, I don't know, you often see the ladies' room and men's room in following the theme of the place that you're in. If you're in Disneyland, you would see two doors, one with a picture of Mickey Mouse and one with a picture of Minnie Mouse. Uh, okay. Very, very common to see this. Uh, cowboys, cowgirls, all right? Sometimes just a picture of a cowboy, a picture of a cowgirl. So be aware of that if you're traveling in America. You won't always see men's room, ladies' room printed on the door. You will see symbols, especially themed to the place where you are. So keep that in mind, okay? Uh, yeah. Sometimes, uh, okay, ladies' room, men's room. Sometimes it's a for, uh, very commonly, uh, I don't know about Brits, but Americans very commonly say, like, uh, if I'm sitting at a table with uh, six friends, I've got to I've got to go to the little boys' room. Or a female would say, I've got to go to the little girls' room. This is also very common, the little boys' room, the little girls' room. To, in speaking, to, to say that, especially in a group of friends, a casual relationship. You wouldn't say this if you were having a business meeting with somebody, probably. You would probably say, I have to go, excuse me, I have to go to the lavatory or uh, I need to use the men's room more formally. But little boys' room, little girls' room is very common. Sam, what's the uh, smallest room? I don't know that. I'm not familiar with that one. Yes, the same like that boys' room, girls' uh, girls' room, smallest room. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. not familiar with that one, but okay, all right. Okay, so men's room, ladies' room, this is very, very common. Uh, good one. Uh, Francisco, can you come up with another one? Well, some guys say the can too. The can. Oh, there's a very good one. Yep. All right, guys hanging out at the bar, shooting the pool or something like that. I got to go to the can. Very common. Very common slang. Obviously, slang, casual, informal. The can, I forgot about that one. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Very good. All right. Uh, I'm going to throw a few more at you, and then we're going to change direction, do something a little different. Um, Here's another one, uh, the commode. Okay, <laughs> the commode is the actual toilet. I have to visit the commode. If you're a sailor, actually, does anybody know? Wide open, anybody in class? If you're a sailor, where where do you go to the bathroom? Always. You know how on ships and nautical terminology they have a different word for everything. The floor is the deck. The, um, the left is port, starboard is right. They have a different word for everything. Does anybody know the bathroom on a ship? No? It's called the head. Always it's called the head. The head. <laughs> yeah. Sam, not a cloakroom. No, 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 no. Nobody should be going to the bathroom in the cloakroom. The cloakroom is where you hang your coats. For example, if you, if you uh, live in a... A northern climate where it's snowy, you would hang your coats in the cloakroom. Definitely 
don't be going to the bathroom in there. <laughs> Thank you, Heidi. Good one. The powder room, females particularly, really never men. Females, women, often go to the powder room. And they also, uh, Heidi, they go to the powder room together. Why? Can you answer this for all the males in the room? Why do women all go to the powder room together? What is up with that? <laughs> don't we don't understand. <laughs> uh, in the company, um, women get in the powder room in front of the mirror. They say something. Ah. They say about their boss or something. Okay, gossip. All right, Carolina. Okay, all right. You're saying the same thing, both of you ladies. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Well, we we're always mystified. Men sit around going, hmm, "What are they doing in there?" Okay, they're talking about us. That's what they're doing. All right. Uh, another one is an outhouse. Does anybody know uh, what an outhouse is? Getting close to uh, somebody said latrine earlier. Yes, uh, same is like that. A uh, toilet. Yeah, and an outhouse is an exterior building separate from the main building, the main house or whatever. You have to go outside to go to the bathroom, and there's a small building, generally with just a hole in the ground. No, no running water. Okay, just. Just a hole in the ground, maybe some kind of wood platform with a hole in it, and you sit on that. And that's an, that's an outhouse, primitive, very primitive bathroom, very primitive. Before the toilet was invented, there were outhouses. Okay. Anyway, uh, all right. I think I've exhausted my supply of uh, <laughs> different words for the bathroom uh, and the toilet. Ah. Um, I'll give you a, one more, kind of a weird one. It's used in a special way. Uh, for example, all right, it's basically an idiom. If you're out drinking all night long, really, you should restrain yourself. Uh, but if you are, if you go out drinking all night long and you get sick the next morning and you sick repeatedly, uh, okay, if, if, for example, my friend Robert, is, Robert went out last night, he was drinking all night long. Where's Robert now? He is praying to the porcelain god. <laughs> okay, all right, he's on his knees in front of the toilet, he's praying to the porcelain god. A toilet, of course, is made from the material porcelain. So this is an idiomatic, uh, I've heard it many times in America, it's a way to express that somebody is very sick after a long night of drinking. <laughs> okay, so if you ever hear that in a movie, that's what they're talking about. Okay, well that was fun. Uh, we're going to move on now and talk about, uh, we're going to do a little reading on intellectual talk about toilets and find out about the history of the toilet. All right, so I'm going to do a little screen share. Toilets, all you need to know, and maybe more than you need to know. Uh, uh, okay, a little light reading. Educational, occupied, okay, we all know what that means. Okay, who invented the toilet? There he is. Does anybody know who this guy, does anybody actually know this ahead of time, out of curiosity? I did not. I'll confess, no. All right. Well, here he is. Uh, all right, we're going to take turns reading uh, this a little bit. Uh, okay. Uh, Heidi, can you start us off? The first. Sir John Harrington was a poet an amateur and not very successful one, but his poetry was not why he would be remembered. Something much more down to earth was to be his uh, legacy. Okay. And then, uh, all right, he invented the lavatory. Uh, okay. 
Heidi, what does it mean, down to earth? Uh -huh. uh, Quotes here. I don't know. All right. Uh, okay. They're like squat, squat. <laughs> <laughs> well, not quite that literal. Uh, not quite. It's an idiom, all right? And you can describe an idea as down to earth, but we often describe a person as down to earth. Uh, down to earth means practical. Okay. In English, there's kind of a connotation of down to earth, grounded. If somebody's really grounded, then they're very practical, logical. They think very clearly step by step about physically, physical things. Um, one thing has to do with another. As opposed to the idea of airy, the adjective airy, or someone who is whose head is up in the clouds, they're very abstract and and thinking ideologically and uh, not practical, impractically. So English language has this whole idea of the ground is solid, dependable, practical. Up in the air is... Well, if something's up in the air, it's undecided, it's abstract, it's not clear, it's impractical. So down to earth kind of falls into that area. The reason that they have it here in quotes, this is a literary device, a, a writing device. Um, it's used to show that they, they're not meaning it in the usual way, or in this case, it's used to show that this is sarcastic, it's a joke, it's ironic, because uh, we're both meaning the idiomatic meaning, down to earth, practical, and we're, he's also meaning physically, like having to do with the earth and putting your bodily wastes into the earth. Okay, so the reason it's in quotes is to show it's kind of a joke. It's tongue-in-cheek. It's said jokingly. Uh, okay, and that you'll see this sometimes when you have words and quotes like this. It's meant to be some kind of either sarcastic or ironic or have a double meaning. That's what that is for. Okay, anyway, let's continue with the history here. Next paragraph. Uh, Jesus, can you read this next paragraph here? Uh, he was a godson of Queen Elizabeth I, but he had been banished from court from telling risky stories and exiled to Kelston near Bath. Okay, well, hang on. He was godson of Queen Elizabeth the first. Okay, with kings and queens and popes. Uh, when we have the Roman numerals following their name and title, then when we speak it, we use ordinal numbers. All right, Louis the Fourteenth, Queen Elizabeth the First, like that. Uh, also, Jesus pronunciation: He had been banished. Word is banished. Okay. He had been banished. Okay. Banished. All right. What is this? What is banished mean? Do you have any idea? Uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, don't approve. Or well, dis uh, has to do with that. Disappeared, but forcibly disappeared. If uh, okay, Se yes. Separate, Carlos. Okay, Maybe please. separate something. Okay, you guys are all dancing around it. You're all very, very close. But the idea, somebody has to banish somebody else. If if my teenage son, if I banish him to his room without dinner, it means that I've sent him away from the dinner table forcibly, uh, and uh, he can't come back to the dinner table. He has to go without dinner. So if somebody is banished from a country, they're not allowed to go to that country. 
Um, if you're banished from your local pub, you're not allowed to go into the pub because maybe you caused a disturbance or something. Somebody has made it official that you can't go back there. Very close, actually, to the other word, which is in red print here, exiled. If you're uh, exiled, you're banished. You're not allowed to go. Actually, they're synonymous. Um, you can be exiled to a place. Okay, You have to go to this place. You're banished to a place. Exiled and banished are actually synonyms. One more kind of interesting word here. He was banished, <laughs> really, for telling risque. Uh, Jesus, the pronunciation, notice the accent aigu is what this is back. That's called on the E. There's a little accent mark. Um, uh, so, uh, risque. Uh, Jesus, do you know what risque means? What's a risque story, for example? Uh, I don't know, teacher. I never heard that word. <laughs> okay. Does anybody know? Let me throw it out to the class. That anybody? joke, a little sexy joke. A little sexy. That's it. Uh, a risque dance number would be one in which, okay, maybe they a little too much leg, a little too much... Cleavage, uh, a little too sexy. Uh, yeah, some, a risque story, risque dance number. Right, something that's a little bit, uh, yeah, sexy is the word. You got it. Um, that's it. Francisco, he was exiled near to Bath. Yeah, he, he was exiled to a place near Bath. That's right. Bath is a place, by the way. It's the name of a city. Uh and Kelston is a town near that city. So, yes, he was. Why? For telling sex, sexy stories. For telling dirty jokes, in other words, to put it another way. Okay, he was sent into exile for telling dirty jokes. Can you imagine? Crazy. All right. Uh, Demas. Uh, next little section from During. Uh, during his uh, exile uh, from uh, 1584 to 9 he built himself a house and devised it uh, and uh, installed the first Flushing laboratory which he named Ajax. Ajax, what a name, okay. Good job uh, dealing with the dates, okay, Demas did that quite correctly, from 1584 to 91, or to 1591, either way, from to, when you see this uh, construction, written construction, that is how it should be spoken, from, from whatever to whatever. All right, he, uh, Demas, he devised, devised. what did that okay. mean? It's a verb. What did he do? It's another way to say devised. No. <clears throat> no, your pronunciation was okay. I'm just I'm talking about the meaning of the word, the definition. If you divide so, something. So maybe invention. Yeah, to, it's very similar to invent. That's right. Invent. Right. You can uh, you can devise an invention. You can also devise a plan, something. You can devise an idea. You can't invent an idea, really. Not quite. Usually we use invention for a physical thing. We often use devise for a more mental thing, like a, you devise a plan. Uh, okay, he thought of it, he invented it, and then he installed it. What is installed, Dimas? No, I think uh, he made it uh, what uh, what he, he was devised. Yeah. Okay, this is actually an important verb uh, that many people don't really get. You install light into your house. You install an air conditioner. You're putting it somewhere as a permanent fixture of your house. 
all right when you're when you install something you don't install a refrigerator because later your wife may decide that you need to move the refrigerator to the other side of the kitchen but you do install kitchen cabinets they are nailed in and you're most likely not going to ever move them you don't install furniture because women like you to move them around periodically but you do install things that are never going to be moved again so he installed a bathroom obviously you can't move your bathroom around once it's there it's there so okay so that's important difference Demas uh, the first flushing lavatory what is to flush it's another verb well here it's, it's used as an adjective here flushing but uh, normal you, print is using a verb. the water. Using yeah, the water. water. Mm -hmm. uh, that's right. Using water to uh, to clean out something. Uh, obviously, you flush a toilet. Uh, okay. When you go to the dentist, the dentist may ask you to rinse your mouth out. So really, you're flushing your mouth with water. You're cleaning it out with water. So rinse, flush. We generally use flush with a toilet and the dentist usually doesn't want to say the word flush about your mouth. So he usually tells you to rinse. But really they mean the same thing. Okay. Uh, moving on. Wow, what a device. Okay, here it is. You can go make one yourself at home. Uh, all right. Uh, Okay, next little section here. Carolina, can you read this paragraph here? There were really two paragraphs. Go ahead. Okay, eventually Queen Elizabeth forgave him and visited his house at Kelson in 1592. Harrington proudly showed, showed showed off his new invention and the queen herself tried it out. She was so impressed it seems that she ordered one for herself. Okay. Can you imagine that? Having the queen over to your house to go to the bathroom. Neato. <laughs> All right. Okay, Harrington proudly in red showed off his new invention. What did he do, Carolina, with his new invention? Um, he went with the queen to the place <laughs> that he started the bathroom. <laughs> do you think he stood there and instructed her how to use it? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he he told that his wife did that. <laughs> okay, to show off. All right, uh, kids show off. Children show off. Like to sh show off. Uh, how would a child show off? Give me another example. It's a verb. It's a phrasal verb. Show off. How to appear I... is to to appear. Yes. Not not a, no. Not really. Um, what action might a child do to show off? No, I don't know if you got quite the right idea. Anybody else in class? Somebody give me an idea, uh, an example of how a child might show off. Anybody? To show something to others uh, proudly. Yeah. I, um, like I got a new toy. How do you right. That? Okay. A child might show off their new toys to their friends. Absolutely. Kind of. It's a little bit bragging. It's like bragging, but physically. Uh, physically, actually showing something. Maybe a child might show off to his parents by um, by doing a handstand or or doing a somersault rolling across the floor. Look what I can do. Mommy, mommy, look what I can do. He's showing off. He's showing his ability. He's bragging about his ability. So Harrington is like bragging. He's bragging about his new invention, but bragging is speaking. Showing off is actually, here it is, showing it to somebody. And it, 
But the concept is like bragging. You, you want the other person to go to say, oh, you're wonderful. You're, you're fishing for compliments and for, you know, positive. You're so lucky. That's so wonderful. You're a genius. Okay. So it has that. Show off has kind of a negative connotation that you're doing it just so other people will recognize you and to feed your ego. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's about ego. So keep that in mind. It's, it's not just showing because then we just say showing. I, I show you my new bathroom. I'm just showing it to you. Look, if I'm showing off my new ba bathroom, that means I want you to be really impressed and tell me how wonderful it is. It's a little bit to feed my ego. Okay. That's the idea. All right, moving on. Carlos, next paragraph, please. Sure. And his, oh, uh, yeah, his water closet had a pen with Carlos. an old... Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? I can hear you. Oh, thank you. Maybe some problem with T-shirt connection? Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. <laughs> oh god, maybe, maybe Francisco, maybe. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Okay. What should we do now?
Hello again. <laughs> Hello. Hi, teacher. Hi. Hi teacher. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Thank you. All right. Sorry about that. Lost connection there for a brief moment. Sorry. Apologies. Okay. Back to work. Where were we? Uh, Carlos, I, uh, I, I popped out right when you started reading this uh, paragraph here. Yeah. All right. So, uh, his work closet had a pen with an opening at the bottom, sealed with a leather face valve, a system of handles, levers, and weights pouring in water from a cistern or a cistern and opened the bulb in spite of the Queen's enthusiasm for this new invention the public remained faithful to the chamber pot okay alright his water closet we've already come up with that one as an alternative meaning for a bathroom uh, okay, well, it talks about the various mechanisms here, handles and levers and valves and so forth. Uh, okay, uh, Carlos, what is a cistern? And by the way, pronunciation, first syllable stress, cistern. Cistern. Yeah, but what is a cistern? Um, where, uh, where you can, s well, maybe, maybe it's not the right pronunciation, but when you can save water, so mm -hmm. under okay. the floor sometimes you have a cistern. You okay. Can save water there. Yeah. Yeah, it's some kind of uh, container to hold water. Exactly. exactly. Usually exactly. a larger amount of water. Generally speaking. Uh, okay. The public, however, were not ex excited about the toilet. Uh, and they remain faithful to the chamber pot. What is a chamber pot, Carlos? Do you know? Um, no, I don't have idea. Okay. Uh, <laughs> a chamber pot is uh, okay. Chamber is an old word for bedroom, basically. Uh, and a pot is a pot. So, okay, uh, just a pot that you put in your bed bedroom and you go to the bathroom in it. <laughs> okay. okay. Woohoo! All right. <laughs> uh, if you can imagine, if you had lived a few hundred years ago, you'd be going to the bathroom in just a pot in your your bedroom, and every day you would, you know, go outside and empty it into a hole or something like that. That's oh a chamber pot. Yeah. Oh God. Strangely, Americans never did this. Americans built outhouses. We would rather go outside into a separate room <laughs> outside to make our stinky smells or whatever. Yeah. Uh, okay. But in Europe, they used chamber pots. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Um, very good. Uh, okay. We, we kind of looked at all that. Toilet stories. Uh, okay. Um, let's talk about toilets overseas. Uh, all right. Uh, Sam's gone. Francisco, uh, have you ever traveled overseas, first of all? Uh, no, teacher. Let's, let's just talk about toilets. <laughs> let's spend the last remaining few minutes. No. Have you ever come upon in your life a very strange or odd device or or toilet? <laughs> no? Yeah, yeah. When, I, when I, go, I, I was a child, we used uh, chamber pads to... Really? Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> really? No we kidding. Were kids, yeah. When you were kids. Okay. Uh, a chamber pot. Oh, by the way, um, if you're, uh, obviously, if you're incapacitated, I mean health, if you're in the hospital or something, 
uh, they're going to use something similar to a chamber pot. Do, do you know what that's called, Francisco? If you're in the hospital and you can't get out of bed, no. they use a device. No, I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember that the name. Okay, it's called a bedpan. Uh, oops. Okay. What did I do there? A bedpan. Yeah. So if you're low on the low on the pole. Uh, working in a hospital, you may have to change the bedpans, which can be okay. probably no fun at all. Uh, yeah, it's called a bedpan. Uh, okay, so, all right, you used a chamber pot. Uh, interesting. Um, all right. Uh, Heidi, I know that you like to travel. Yeah, I have travel. You ever have you ever run into in your travels a uh, kind of an unusual toilet? Mm, I I done the, the toilet in uh, airport du Dubai. And Dubai. Yeah, okay. there are some faucet and uh, connected some hose just a side of a, a toilet bowl. I didn't know how I can use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What? What was it again? Um, a faucet, just a side oh. of the toilet bowl, uh -huh. and a long hose connected. <laughs> but it's a uh, um, we can flush the toilet. So how I can use it? I don't know. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. I think possibly it <laughs> it's to wash yourself with. Possibly. Ah, it's female. Uh, sure, it's a female toilet. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> you know, here in the Philippines, it's very common to have a toilet with no toilet paper. But instead, there'll be uh, a small, uh, a scooping kind of bucket with a handle, like a small pot, but obviously not for cooking. Yeah, even uh, in the restaurant, like that. <laughs> yeah, even in a restaurant uh, sometimes. Yes, that's absolutely true. So you sit on the toilet and do your business, and then you have to just wash yourself with the, mm -hmm. with the water. The yeah. Japanese toilet is very unique. A toilet yeah. wash your body part after doing something. <laughs> okay. Not came out uh, from um, the seat. Uh, the seat. Toilet seat, under the toilet seat, and uh -huh. like a um, water pistol. <laughs> ah, like a water pistol. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Then wash, wash your part. Very clean after that. Very good. Okay. Many countries don't use toilet paper. Um, and in the Philippines, they don't use toilet paper. Instead, they wash. Uh, okay. Uh, hey, Sus. In your country, do they use toilet paper or do they wash? <laughs> we use toilet paper. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you could save a tree, I suppose, if you didn't use toilet paper. Yes. But uh, all right. Would you be uncomfortable if you didn't have any, if you went into a bathroom and there was no toilet paper? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it's very yeah. uncomfortable. Yes. Yes. Uh, if if you're accustomed to using toilet paper in your travel, may I highly suggest that you bring some with you, <laughs> here in your bag <laughs> or your purse, or what have you. Yeah. Um, another interesting thing about here in the Philippines is that many toilets don't have the lid to sit on in the toilet. Why is that, you may ask? Well, how can they, they can't enjoy sitting on the hard porcelain? Well, they don't. They actually put their feet on the toilet and they squat over the toilet to go to the bathroom. So, okay, this is also a the squat method is also very common in many countries. Uh, Demas, have you ever run into any in your, in your travels, in your life travels? Have you ever run into any, any interesting or unique toilet features? Mm, no. I, 
I haven't seen any um, unique toilet and laboratory. Only the usual. Only the usual. Okay. Uh, this uh, here's one here. Let me just screen share this. Uh, here's kind of a y you might run into this if you travel. Something like this, where there's not actually like a seat for you to sit on. Obviously, you have to use the squat method. <laughs> It's a very common uh, type of toilet in Ukraine. It's uh, in school, ah. maybe in uh, university, some university. Like this? Uh, yeah, like this. Oh, uh, okay. And uh, some uh, public toilet, maybe. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, have this type. All right. In Ukraine, it's it's normal in Ukraine. Okay, I see. Uh, okay. Demons, since you're a, a man, a male, do they ever have the, um, by the way, another kind of toilet specifically for number one, that's liquid, number two is solid, by the way, more toilet terminology, um, a urinal is used for men, you can just stand up and do your business. Uh, all right, sometimes you will find a urinal where it's just a trough. You line up like cattle at a drinking water, and you do your business. Do they have trough urinals in Ukraine and Russia? Do they have such things? Trough? What is trough? Trough. A trough, is, well, you use it to feed animals, it's many animals. So it's a long, like, half cylinder. and You pour food into it or water, and all the animals can drink, but it's also the, there's oh. such a thing as a trough urinal, so men can just line up like, like yeah, they eating breakfast, but, you know, doing their business. Uh, I, I remember the type of uh, laboratory, but I was uh, a child in the time. Now yeah. it's, now it's uh, re yeah. rebuilt. Yeah. Uh, and Strangely, you may run into these trough urinals, even in the United States, in like you go to a baseball game. Or something. These these are kind of common. Uh, I don't know why, but sports venues for some reason men are supposed to. I don't know. Uh, get into a contest or something. I'm not sure. But anyway. Anyway, I am overtime. I'm already late for my next class. So anyway, hope you learned a little vocabulary or something interesting about toilets. Thank you very much. I've got to sign off. Take care.